Janitor cleaning the stairwells of the North Tower of the World Trade Center when the planes hit. The events of that day profoundly affected his political views and he's become a vocal critic of the wars in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And I'm pleased to say he joins me now. <coughs> Let's um, come to your story in a moment. But first of all, 9-11 and its <coughs> aftermath has dominated American politics. Seven um, years. Until this credit crunch, really. Let's that be is honest correct. about it. Seven years non-stop it has been the politics of fear that has been instilled in the minds of the American people from the very beginning, non-stop. The war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan, the expenses of homeland security, uh, the politics of uh, losing uh, civil rights constantly because of 9-11, the stopping of people without the right to a lawyer, the eavesdropping uh, law bill that was passed in Congress, so they will intercept your phone calls, your emails. All of that was uh, the main concern for the last seven years nonstop. The credit crunch happens, everything changes. The political views, totally took a big hit. Uh, you have seen that Obama has been said from the very beginning, you know, the issue here is the economy, mm -hmm. the health uh, issues, and the education of the nation. Mm -hmm. And he had, Riley has uh, captivated uh, a lot of the nation, most of the nation, right mm -hmm. now because of his position. My case is looking more like the old guard, the Bush administration uh, uh, voice of uh, the campaign and uh, the policies that have failed us for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. And I am not on either side, but I have seen as a leader of the victims and survivors that they have used our pain, despair, and suffering as a political uh, uh, maneuver. But now we have seen at least some relief because of the whole, sadly, because of the whole economic crunch. You've become quite associated, haven't you, with the extraordinary events that day because you were, that is uh, you're supposed to be the last man who left the, the North, the North Tower. Tower when it collapsed. What were you actually doing in there to start well, with? Well, I worked in the building for 20 years and I was a janitor. I was a person that actually cleaned 110 flights of stairwells every day. And on 9-11, I had the only master key that was available. That Which you have was, with you here. This, this is, is it. the master key. That they call used. it the key of hope. And this key was uh, basically what I used to actually go with the firemen, floor by floor. I remember that when the building uh, got impacted by the plane after the huge explosion in the basement, the building shakes so hard that most of the doors got jammed. So we have to use the key and force to open many of those doors. So you climbed up the stairwells with the firefighters, trying to open the doors, trying to let as many people as possible escape. What, what floor were you actually on when the first the, plane I was came? in the basement. I was you in, were in the, the basement, basement, actually. There was right. a huge explosion in the basement. And at that moment, the first thing that I said, whoa, it's a generator that just blew up. And because we have no windows, we have no way of saying, you know, what's going on. A person comes running into the office saying, explosion, explosion. All the skin hanging from under his armpits on both arms to the top of the fingertips and when i look at his face pieces missing from his face and i said what happened what happened and uh, when i said don't move because i was going to pick up the phone to call the emergency medical unit that was located on the other tower bang another explosion and that's when i said no everybody gotta get out so i pushed everybody out went back inside the building got two people that were stuck inside of an elevator and another guy from another building got them outside the building and went back inside the building so, so people were rescued because of you because you opened the stairwell what actually happened to you personally if you were the last man huh. in the tower i was coming collapsed? out at the moment with a person on a wheelchair named ed bayet and as he was getting a first aid i was told get the ambulance ready i went down 27 flights of stairs with this man and three firemen and as i went to the front of the building to set up the ambulance, all I see is that across the street, the police had the area cordoned out, and they start screaming, don't look back, don't look back. And you know, when they tell you don't look back, it's the first thing you're gonna say. And when I turned around, I saw the bodies of the people that jumped out of the building, and the building started to shake, and this is started to fall. And the only thing I saw was a fire truck. I sleep right under the fire truck, and the building started to collapse right on top of me. So I was trapped, buried alive, and uh, luckily, uh, Hours after, I was pulled from, from under the rubble. But because the truck did not, uh, the tires did not blow out, uh, I was able to sustain myself for enough time. You were an extremely lucky man, weren't you? An amazing story. You've made me go quite shivery thinking about it, actually. Uh, William Rodriguez, thank you very much indeed thank for, you so much. for joining us and telling us your story. Obviously, um, terrorism and security is a major issue in the American election because of those days. Thank you very much indeed. Well, of course, uh, lots more on our website. Everything you need to know about the U.S. presidential election. SkyNews.com slash U.S. election. Interactive maps there.